Hello, this is Dr. Linda Martinez Louie. I want to talk to you today about healing emotionally and psychologically from adrenal fatigue, especially if you have been married to, are married to, or are divorcing a covert narcissist. There's nothing like a covert narcissist trying to deal with them in a marital situation or going through the marathon process of divorcing them, them that can be more difficult and complex with many switchbacks, roundabouts, and any number of psychological ambushes. And many of you who are going through this very difficult, complex, and painful process are beginning to feel very fatigued, and some of you are feeling exhausted. So I want to talk to you about, I'm not, I don't diagnose, I'm not a medical doctor or anything of that kind, but um, I have a PhD in clinical psychology, and of course I'm a clinical expert on the narcissistic personality. And I often hear from clients, my consultation clients on the telephone, that tell me that they are really wiped out and that they believe that this is part of the extreme chronic stress that they have been and are going through as a result of being married to and or divorcing a covert narcissist. So I want to talk a little bit about recognizing the state that you are in and also some of the ways that you can heal psychologically and emotionally from extreme chronic stress and what is called adrenal fatigue. It has other names as well, like chronic fatigue, uh, etc. Now, when we go through continual stress and are having to deal with these very impossible individuals, our body takes quite a toll. Many of you are not able to sleep at night. You have a difficult time falling asleep. You're awake much of the night. Uh, you're constantly in a state of fight or flight, the sympathetic nervous system. And some of you have problems with eating behaviors. You may have trouble eating. You don't have an appetite. Or you tend to overeat. This would be another another kind of symptom that you would have. You may feel very depressed and completely worn down. I hear this all the time from individuals that write to me uh, through my website and also who make comments on my videos and also on my podcast. And I want to mention the podcast here briefly. I have a podcast that's called the Narcissist in Your Life podcast. And I have innumerable numbers of podcasts on there that I think you will find very helpful. I also have a, a YouTube channel called Re uh, Recovering and Healing After the Narcissist. But to address the whole business of extreme fatigue uh, without you know, going into a diagnosis. First of all, be kind to yourself throughout the entire process that you're going through. Because if you start becoming judgmental and, and, and critical with yourself, the way the narcissist, the covert narcissist is, with constant projections, humiliations, put downs, gaslighting, this kind of thing, it's it, it's going to make it so much more difficult for you to get to the process of making a decision about whether you're going to stay married to the covert narcissistic partner or whether you will go through the divorce process. And much of this is learning, some of you for the first time, to put yourself first. And if you have uh, some... Uh, like adrenal fatigue, it's exceedingly important that you pay attention to the signs that your 
to the messages that your body and mind are giving you about your level of extreme fatigue or exhaustion. You have to pay attention because if you don't, then this is not going to get any better. It's, it's, it is improved by your recognizing it, pulling in and, and knowing that you need to sleep, you need to rest, you need to get people out of your life that are causing you to move into the fight or flight sympathetic nervous system. Narcissists tend to thrive off of the sympathetic nervous system. They are at it 24 seven and many of them don't need a lot of sleep. And some of them have very high metabolic rates, so they don't need a lot of sleep or rest. And I think that many of them just thrive off of making other people miserable, miserable, frightened, worried, uh, you name it. That's what they do. So if you recognize that you are beginning to feel exceedingly fatigued and worn out and exhausted, like I said, pay close attention. Try to make, make a decision about whether you're going to, if you're married to a covert narcissist, make a decision about leaving or having a, divorcing the covert narcissist. Make a clear decision about that. The covert narcissist is not going to change. This is a very fixed personality disorder that does not change. So make your plans and decide what you're going to do and the details of how you're going to do it. Take time each day to rest, even if it's for a short period of time. Find a, a position that you can rest in that is very comfortable and where you will not be disturbed. Listen to really beautiful music. Hearing lovely music helps to put us in the calming, restorative part of the nervous system, the parasympathetic. Here there is a sense of beauty and ease, relaxation, um, peace, inner peace, where you feel solitude. This is so vital now for you to begin these practices. Do everything you can to get to bed as early as possible by 10 o'clock if you possibly can. This way, all the systems of the body are cleansing themselves. And one of the best ways to restore yourself is through sleep and rest. And be sure that you eat very nutritious meals. They don't have to be large ones. In fact, you don't want them to be. You want to keep your blood sugar very even because this affects all the systems of the body and also affects how we feel psychologically. We are a lot calmer when the blood sugar is kept even. Make sure that you hydrate well. Drink really, really high quality water and that you don't eat sugar. Sugar is very bad. It gets us into the sugar rush and then there's a depletion and the per we lose energy. The blood sugar becomes very unbalanced and that can lead to feelings of anxiety, stress, even more stress. So be very careful of that. And choose individuals. It can be only one or two that you really trust and are worthy of your trust. That's very important. So I wanted to just share some of this with you because I talk to a lot of individuals, of clients, and also hear from those who say that they're just worn out, wiped out, and some of them think that they do have adrenal fatigue. And that's not a decision diagnosis that I would make, obviously, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying what you can do to recover and thrive by putting yourself first. The other part of this also has to do with your creativity. 
Let your creativity shine, no matter what, in whatever form that it takes you. That is exceedingly important. When we are in a marriage to a covert narcissist or divorce in a covert narcissist, they have put um, these constraints on us that don't allow us to be our true selves. And you find that when you are free of the covert narcissist, your, your creative flow completely opens up and you now are living your life each day in the true, authentic self.